Dave here. How are you? Today is the uh, 18th of April 2021. Thank you very much for that. Carl saves me having to ask everyone all over the place. Now, for those who haven't watched the show or don't know me, my name is Dave Stanton. I'm the inventor of the Stanton Bench. This is what I will be assembling, the, Luton, the Lutians Bench, which is a garden seat, not to be confused with my bench. That's where I'll be assembling it today up here for the first part, then I'll be assembling the rest on the floor behind me because it is a heavy bench. It's built out of hardwoods, New Guinea teak, and Australian black butt. Uh, it's been a bit of an epic project that we've been doing. I have included posts to uh, the beginners forums because there's some things in here that you might be able to pick up with. Uh, whilst I'm using some machines that are kind of high end, there are other ways of doing things. Like you'll see, I have created these things. These are the same profile as a Domino 14, 14 millimeter thick Domino. And these are gonna be the armrests because they're gonna be nice and friendly to rest on. Um, go figure. Anyway, uh, you can do the same kind of thing using a drill, Brad Point drill bit, that's maybe 12 millimeters diameter or a half inch and use a portable drill guide, which aren't very expensive. And you can drill holes at an angle or straight up and down and chisel it out and make up a profile like this with something like a router table. So I'm, I'm trying to include everyone if I can. Now, the bench, the bench, the bench. It's, you saw the photo at the beginning that I did of the, that was the dry fit, the dry assembly. It's crucial, absolutely crucial you do a dry fit the reason being, if you have something that's going to hold a joint open, like one of these was a little bit too long and I couldn't close up all the arm correctly, so I had to trim it down. And then once that was done, it closed up properly. One of the rails, one of the dominoes for these seat rails, and you notice they're all scalloped, uh, it was too long as well. Just only one of them. I don't know why it was, but you know, I just picked up the wrong one and threw it in and it held the joint open. Now, if that was a glue up and I had glue everywhere, I would have cried. <laughs> Basically, it would have been a disaster. All right, next week, we're going to actually put the seat slats on and, uh, and that'll be the end of the project. This week, we're gonna do the main glue up. Now, I did mention that uh, I got the wrong dominoes here and there. So what I've done now is I've actually put those dominoes in there for the spreader rails and which are in the bottom of the bench. That's that section there. This part here is the spreader and I have made it up as one piece. So it's already dominoed together, ready to go. See the dominoes are in the end. The dominoes, for those that don't know, are a non-rotating dowel, basically. That's all you have to know. And there's a machine that's made for them and it's a bloody nice machine and it's expensive. Okay, so that's that. And these are the seat for the seat rails and that's for these guys here that I just showed you. They're a certain length. So I didn't want, want to pick up, there's 20 millimeters difference in the profiles that I've cut. Didn't want to pick up the wrong one and get it stuffed. Now, let me have a look down through here. I think I'll show you a couple of pictures of what I've been doing during the week. Now, this is how I created the dominoes. I set up the jig. I've got a quarter inch round over in there, which is 6.35 millimeters. And two of those is very close to being 13 millimeters of, of round. And uh, it just works. I cut the profile to the right width and the thickness. I did put it through the jointer, the, the planar thicknesser, to just trim it down a little bit. And then as I say, put those, uh, those round overs on it and away you go. It's not that hard. These are also New Guinea teak. So ripped it on the table saw, and great result. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Uh, the front of the bench, sorry, the back of the bench is this guy here. Now you'll notice that it's not just a straight up and down section. It has, it has a shape 
on the back. So I can lean back on the bench and feel comfortable. See that? No gut. Look at that. <laughs> um, and feel comfortable. And the back legs taper out again. So what I did to make sure that the handrails in the back hip, this section here, aren't coming out at 90 degrees up at an angle of 6 degrees, I wanted them to be coming out at 84 or 83 degrees, whatever that was. I used the section that I cut out from that. And I'll show you what I did. Let me see if I've got some um, sanding here. Here we go. And this is using the new dust extraction system here. You watch this as I'm sanding this wedge up. I joined it together because it's double width. Joined it together and I put it over the sander and absolutely nothing was coming out. The dust that's sitting on the machine was from before I did the upgrade on the sanding, on the uh, dust extraction. Watch this. So that's pretty amazing. That dust extraction is working brilliantly. I'll put a link in the description down the bottom or maybe a little card up here at the end of the video for people that watch the recording. The link to how I did that uh, six inch system in the workshop, huge difference. Uh, right, so then, as I said, I made this up. Now this was for me to sit the domino on. I made templates everywhere as well. Remember that we made the front legs template so this is where I set it all up for the dominoes to go on top of the piece of wood. Now on the front rails, it was fine. I just did straight plunges with the domino, not an issue. Um, Don, off to the corner. Yes, yeah, don't look at the rest of the class either. Look into the corner, Don. Some people, dearie me, um, it... <laughs> It really does suck, doesn't it? Uh, let me see, what else have we got here? Um, now, on, the, on this part at the back, I'll see if I've got a photo of the domino actually well, doing the job. Yeah, here we go. That's set up at the angle with the wedge and the template on the top. And I'm using the TSO Bigfoot, which is bloody marvelous. If you've got a domino, you've got to get yourself a TSA Bigfoot. I do have links down there and I will let you know I am an affiliate, but man oh man, I could clamp the domino down. There was no chance of it slipping. It made it extremely safe. And then we've got the, uh, I had to measure the depth to allow for the thickness of the wedge. Here we go. Now this is the point here, the center. Um, I want to go in 20 millimeters into this timber down here. So my paraphernalia above it is 30, so I'm going to have to set the domino to 50. I'll take it back down to there and up to there. Done. That's the depth of the plunge. So there's lots of little things that I really had to keep my wits about me while I was building this thing. I did make comment on social media during the week, you know, I've been eat, sleep, whatever. This, I've just been living this bench. Bath, glass of port, all that kind of stuff, and focusing. And I got there. I got there. Um, I did a double domino join in the in the bottom. Let me see if I've got that. Just here. This is in the spreader across the bottom. And I thought, you know, there's going to be a bit of an area there. I don't want it to rotate at all. And I didn't want to do the plunge sideways in that particular area. So I used the... Um, the fence on the domino to hold in position. You see above, you can see where it's uh, where, where I've got the fence tipped over. So it was at 30 and 50 millimeters deep, uh, respectively. Back here. All right. Um, okay, I was impressed with the 50% increase in performance, though. It's huge. It's <laughs> hold on. I'm leaving myself open to a whole lot of uh, nasty comment there. Oh, the other thing, what I've done is I have labeled my templates that I've made. Well, why make more than one template? If I want to do this again, why make all these templates again further down the track? So that's that. This one here is the seat, as you can see. 
I'll drill little holes in there and just hang them up on the wall somewhere in the workshop. Because I would like to make another one of these. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look down the side here, make sure that I've got everything done. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right. Time to start the glue up. As I say, I'm going to glue this end first. You may notice that these have blue tape around them. Now, there's two reasons that I've got the tape there. One is to try and avoid the glue going up all over the place as I put this into the joint. The other one on this end, you'll see it's at an angle. Now, this is for the back section. How I'm going to do this glue up is the front rail, or the front rail and the front arms, all one piece. I'm going to glue everything into that first because it's a flat unit. And so it'll be just 90 degrees straight up, easy to glue. The, when I, then I'm going to put the whole unit down on the floor, we'll move the cameras and we'll photograph from above or we'll film from above. And these will let me know when I'm in the correct depth because there's a whole lot that I'll be putting, you know, there's seven of these on each side plus the, all of the uh, seat rails and also the spreader rails at the bottom. They've all got to work together. Wish me luck. It's 10 past. We should have it all finished during this show. First of all, I'll mix up some glue. Put some gloves on, of course. So how's everyone's week been? And uh, you're excited about it. Is anyone as excited as I am about it? It's such a nice bench. It really is. And I doubted myself when I started. I thought, you know, there's no way that mine's going to come up any good. But... I'm, I've imp I impressed myself. Do you do that at all? You make something and you go, man, man, I made that. It's so good. Uh, all right, glue, glue, glue. And I'm using West System again. And I'm using the slow hardener this time. One of those. It's a five to one ratio. And that's that. And if you don't use the pumps, you've got rocks in your head. This is a spatula that, I, that they have. And all I do is just give it a twist and see how the glue just goes a different color. And then it, it comes off really quickly. He says. <laughs> um, you know what I'll do? I'll just use that little um, butt chisel to finish doing it. There and the other side. Beautiful. You don't want any glue left, any hard glue left in there to when you start doing it because you don't want it stuck in in there and holding joints open. So okay, stirring time. I possibly should have started stirring before I started talking. All right. <clears throat> Better than rolling down a hill in a globe. What's I don't I don't understand that, Kiwi. Chasing a cheese wheel? Maybe I've missed some of the conversation. Well, we went out during the week. Yeah, talk about a bit of social gossip in the meantime went out during the week with Vicky uh, she had a presentations dinner that she had to for work and uh, she got a little award and everything so she was chuffed so we got dressed up I put a jacket on <laughs> we had a jacket anyway um, one of my daughters Bianca came over and did all the makeup for Vicky and she looked absolutely beautiful so I thought got to get a photo be one of the only times you see us in, uh, in gear like that David, exactly right. Exactly right. You've got to use those. Anyway, it was a lovely night. Has anyone in Sydney ever been, or in Australia, been to the Sydney Royal Yacht Squadron? That's where the dinner was at, right on the harbour. Very, very nice. You know, in, down in Kirribilli, very kind of high-end area of Sydney. I don't know what the land would be worth down there. Maybe a $2,000 a square centimetre. That's why some sports wish you break an arm and a leg. Ah, well, there you go. Now, again, I'll be using 
a, uh, a painting brush, a small paint brush, very, very small, to apply this glue. And this is, as I say, West Systems 105 epoxy. Slow, I'm hoping. But this is, this is going to be a pretty fast glue up. What I'll do is I'll put a clamp on here in the Stanton bench, of course. The whole thing's steady while I'm putting it together. I've got a fair overhang out this end, so I don't want to lose anything there. I'm going to decant a little bit of this into another cup so that it doesn't get hot. I've found that the more volume you have of this glue, the quicker it goes off. So I'm just going to put that over there and then I'll put this spatula in an empty cup. Now I have labeled each one of these arm rails. This is 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A and 7A. And this side is labeled A and it starts from 1 here, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A and so on. The other side, of course, guess what it's called? I'll leave that with you. You have a think. All right, we might go to another camera whilst we do this part. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, maybe Carl Camp and chat. There we go. Bit easier to see everything. I'll move that out of the way. And brush. Ah, oh, David, why do you do that? Why do you pick something up and then put it down and then walk away from it? Okay, kids, tell Uncle Dave where he's put the bloody brush down. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I've got a fair few here. Wherever they are, got no idea. I can't believe this. I really can't. Um, that's insane. <sighs> Found it. it. Was over the other side. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put some glue in here, and then a little bit on the ends, without spilling it everywhere. And it doesn't need an absolute truckload. So what's everyone think about my idea about making my own dominoes for the 14 millimeter? I think it's brilliant. It works so well. I'm not trying to get too much everywhere there. And it's easy to do. If you've got a router table, it's dead easy to do. You can do it with just an ordinary router as well if you wanted to, if you clamp the timber correctly. Now, if I get some glue around the edges, it's not going to concern me. It's probably better not, but, you know, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I will clean that off with a chisel or a scraper. All right, so we're going to start off with one a and the 20 millimeter end. You might notice I've also written 20 just here. You may or may not see that. I'm going to give it a quick touch with some glue here. And the number side is going to be sticking out. Done. 20. The, the more foolproof you make it before you start, the better it's going to end up. There's very little stress. I'm not. You remember when I was doing the glue up of the back? <laughs> I was having a hell of a time. I'm waiting for the comments to say, wow, this is exciting. <laughs> 1.8 million. I was talking about per square centimeter 
Peter. Yeah, I don't know what 1.8 million would buy you as far as land is concerned in Kirribilli, probably enough for a garage. If that, it wouldn't be a very big one. It's where our Prime Minister's uh, residence is, I think. He doesn't own it. It's the, com the country owns it. But even so, what do you think of that? I'm going to change cameras so you can see what's happening from the side. There you go. Uh, 20. Yep, that's the end. <laughs> And this whole glue up is only going to use four clamps, I hope. <laughs> As I threw I hope in there really quickly at the end. It's going together well, isn't it? Let's say just a little, a lot of preparation. And uh, what a difference. Seven. Beautiful. I'm not putting any glue on the other part until, I, on this end, until I drop it down on the floor. Now I'll put this on as well. Yeah, I will. I just had a quick think about whether I would or not. Now this is the, this, this box here, or this bag here, the Spreader rails, dominoes, and it's always a bit harder to open these bags up when you've got gloves on. One. And I'll do the rest of them so I don't. No, it's the spreader, you idiot. Not there. That's not there, not there, not there. Put in the wrong spot. Okay, so here's this is going to be a lesson on how to pull a domino out. <laughs> ah, I shouldn't have done it. I, you know, I, I did pause for a second. I should. Do you ever get that where you you think, oh, I'll do this, and then you think, no, 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 don't do it. It goes in here. Spreader. Got him. Okay, and where are we down here? A pair of pliers. Got it. Straight out down to the other end. That's okay. Got him. Beautiful. We live again. Uh, I'll put those there for the moment. Actually, I'll put them back in the bag so I don't lose them. And put it up on the table here beside the spreader. Lovely. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do... <laughs> Yeah, a couple of million dollars for the complete uh, net worth of what the tax bill for the year is for Australia is probably not much. Not a big thing. Done. All right. And one of these. Now, I need to put the flat end on. See here? This is the 90 degree end. 90 degree end here, and the other end is off at 8.2 degrees or whatever it is. So, bit of goo in there. Bit of goo there. Dave, do you need to square those pieces with the legs before the epoxy sets up. I've got a fair bit of time with the epoxy, so I'll be okay. This is the slow hardener. Beautiful. 
All right, let's go to another camera. Let's just go back to the main camera. Yeah. All right. Do the middle one. This is the kind of thing I'd be normally having music playing while I'm doing this. In the background, keep me calm. And the rest of the rails, the square ends. Oops. I wait till the project is finished before I take ownership of it and ask for another one. You still think it's yours, do you, baby? Hmm. Hmm, interesting. That's like uh, in the Matrix where uh, one of the guys asked Neo, so you think that's air you're breathing now? <laughs> and he says, hmm. Interesting. <laughs> mm. no, of course it's yours. You can... um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm, I'll be painting it as well. I'm going to paint it white. So that matches all the rest of the stuff we have. I'm going to live beside the fountain, beside the one that Arthur built. The, the bench that Arthur built, I should say. I don't think Arthur built a fountain. Arthur being my great-grandfather, we've got the bench that he made, and it's absolutely beautiful. I thought they might be nice side by side out there in the garden. Hey, we're really powering on. This isn't taking as long as I thought it would. Last one with some goo on it. Oop, and the inside a little bit. I forgot the inside. See, I, this West System stuff, you don't need a lot. Bloody amazing. If your joints are, are good. Ah, beautiful. That was a little bit of a panic there. All right. I'm going to move the whole thing along this way uh, so I can work on that end. So I'm going to move this camera out of the way, just over there for the moment, I think. Release that. Slide the whole thing along the bench. And you can see what's happening down the end there. Cool. Do all of these. And I have all of those over there. All right, I might just glue all of these holes. You know, I guess it's a little bit of a boring episode today, but I like to see things going together. And sometimes the reasoning behind why things have been done. The glue on the surface isn't going to worry me because a light sand, and as I say, this is all being painted. If it was going to be stained or, or a clear finish on it, well, that'd be a different story altogether. But outside, I prefer paint because I think it gives a much more durable finish and protects the timber, even though the timber is teak. It's not a very greasy teak either, this one. So I don't know. I think we'll be right. That's all good. And I'll lay these out so that I know 
where they're at. Move that over there. Now I'll do the painting. I enjoy painting. So I'm going to lay it out with the 20 millimeter my end. That's seven, one, and 20. Yes, that is two and 20. Six and 20. Three, four, five and 20. Excellent. So straight in to start. One. Two. Now I have the dimensions written on the outside as well. Oh, sorry, um, the, the label and everything so that it's just going to be a matter of sand around the outside. And with pencil and paint, it's, it's not an issue. 20? Yes, that's right. It looked like that a bit of an angle on it. Four. But it didn't. So I was watching Cole's show this morning. Do yourself a favor if you're not aware of what Cole does. He's a brilliant box maker and he's showing you all his secrets. And today one of his little secrets was how to cut sandpaper using a little jig that he made with a hacksaw blade and a block of wood. Good idea. Now these parts over here, there's a little bit of splitting in the timber. I made sure that I didn't make these too tight to swell it and break it. But the glue on it, I'm hoping is going to act almost like a bow tie and hold the, hold the timber together so it can't check anymore. And I think it's going to work well. Oh, man. See their different lengths? because the thing's leaning back. It took a long time to nut it out. Anyway, we're getting there. The glue's not getting hard at all in the um, cups. It's holding well. This is the last of these. And then I think I might move it all down onto, down onto the floor at this stage. So give me a sec. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit heavy. The more I put on it, the heavier it is to move it. Right. I'll get the other camera. Uh, if I swing that around like so, that might work. It might. Drop that down. Let's see if that's going to work. Okay. Mouse. Um, I don't know if I'm going to spray it or whether I'll... Uh, or what I'll do, Stephen. I might, I might spray it about... Come back a bit, I think. And like that. I think that'll work. All right. Now, 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 now. I need to put the spreader and the dominoes in here. So the dominoes in here first. Now these are quite deep. And I'll be going to my second batch of glue in a, in a moment. All right. Dominoes. Good. Um, second batch of glue. Oh, beautiful. That's, that's worked really well. I'm very happy with that. Um, yep, that'll be fine. Okay. 
Yes. I'm going to get my mallet because these ones I've got to drive down a little bit further than what they're going. Tip it up a touch. Right there. Cool. All right. Don't drive them in too fast. If you drive them in too fast, you're not going to give the glue enough time to seep up these little glue lines in the side, and you may end up splitting it. And that would be a tragedy. Getting this glue on the end grain, because it sets, uh, it, it soaks it up, not as much as it does on a, uh, on a softwood, but it still does. You know, if you had a friend to help you do the gluing process at this stage, it would probably uh, work very well for you. <laughs> the last piece that I have to put on before I bring the back over to it is the, um, the spreader. But there's very little gluing going to be happening after, after this part is done. Okay, time to bring the spreader over. Make sure I put it on the right way. The face is there, that's correct. Tipping it up at the angle at the moment, the reason being, uh, I want to put the glue on that side. This side is going to be going down onto it. Down the other end. I got the uh, the dust extractor, or the, the small one for the small power tools, and made sure all of the mortises were cleaned out. There was no sawdust left, it, left in them, because that can also be an issue two ways. It can block the domino or the dowel, whatever you're using, from making full penetration going down to the hilt. And also, it can reduce the uh, goodness, can I say, now is that way? No, it's the other way. You see that? There's an angle on there, it's 8.2 degrees, and it has to be going this way, of course the back legs are going to be facing out. Come on. Good. Look, let's see what's going on down here. All right, that one's pushing down well. Just locating this one's going to be fun. Ah, uh, drama. Not to worry. Not to worry. I'm going to be good. It's all going to be good. Move that over there so I can get underneath. The thing is, I can't quite see back up under it. So I'll put a block under there so I can see what's going on. To see where the, where the mortise is. That's better. Okay. 
Gotcha. You're all panicking, weren't you? Thinking, oh, he stuffed it. He's had it. What I'll do now also is I'll put a block there and another block up that end so I can put the clamps under it before I put too much weight onto it. Um, there, because I'm going to clamp on that point and possibly there. That's a good idea, David. I surprise myself sometimes. Okay, more dominoes and a bit of glue on everything and then put the back on. And then we're just about done. Stand her up and see how it looks. Okay, that's that end. Those two dominoes that I had over here. And that's all of, all of the joints basically s sorted out. Mike Dean wanted to know if I was going to use the fast hardener. He's a bit of a cheeky fellow, isn't he? <laughs> um, I'm just about out of glue, so I might mix some more up for these. And I can. Stirring. Yeah. So it's... It's going well, I'm very happy with it. Can you see the splitting? Oh no, you can't see the splitting because I haven't got the camera aimed at it. So we'll mix this up. I've got to put some glue on that domino down there. I'm going to put glue on all of these and then also on the receiver. And the reason I brought it down is because I don't want to have it dragging around on top of gluey parts and putting mess everywhere. I think we'll be right. This is good. So I'll put a clamp on it at both ends and then I'll stand her up and then I'll go to town basically with the clamps at that stage. Right, where are we? A little bit of glue on here. Oh yeah, that's easier. All right, glue on all of these. See, they're moving around still easy enough. Some are going to have a little bit more bite than others. The reason being, these ones at the top here, I don't know if you can see, these ones at the top were very close to the absolute out top of that and I, on, the, on the back, and I didn't want it to come through because remember, I'm working at, a, at whatever angle it was, and also, um, I'm... I'm pushing the domino down blind almost. So I couldn't really see what was going to be happening whilst I was doing the plunge. So it was a little bit of a uh, experiment, basically, as far as using it with, with um, the Bigfoot and, uh, and a wedge to create the angle. So it's basically like a compound compound mortis. It's good fun. But scary. It's scary. You know, you, 
you do something and you spend all this time making something, you think, oh, I don't want to stuff it now. I put too much time into it. And of course, I could make another one. If, I, if it really, if it went to rubbish, well then I'd just make another one. That's all there is to it. And I'd give this one to the dog to sleep on. Nearly there. Cool. Excellent. Now, I've got to do it on the back. Move this camera over there a little further. Actually, I might do this up on the bench. Move the camera right out of the way. Move that. Switch the cameras. And that. Put this guy up here. Easier than working on the floor all the time. All right, quickly some glue in the in all of the mortises here. I'm sorry if I'm not being very chatty at the moment, but you'll, you'll forgive me, you'll understand why. I'm trying to move along. I know, I know I'm using the slow hardener, but at the same time, I don't want to tempt, tempt fate. I've done a lot of the roundovers as well prior to assembly because there's no way that I'd get the, the little trim router into some of these corners if I hadn't, but it's just a matter of focusing and making sure that you're doing it in the right spot and don't put a round over where you don't want it because that's nothing worse than two um, faces or an edge and end, end and a face touching up to each other and there's the round over in the middle instead of making it look like one nice neat joint it looks a little bit weird this is the area also where I made the mistake in the corner there with the um, when I did the plunge, I plunged seven, I followed the wrong line I, and I went seven millimeters away from where I should have been. Okay, that's all done. Uh, the other camera again, so you can watch as it goes on and watch a grown man cry if it doesn't work. Oh, back here. Um, Here we go. All righty. Turn that that way. There you go. Here we go. Have I moved the camera to Bilio? Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, not to worry. About, about there. All right. Here we go. If I line it up about there, and that should be the start of where it goes on. Okay, that one's holding it up, touch. Good, he's in. This one. In. 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 In, in, okay. 
Okay. Cool. Doesn't help when your glasses start moving around <laughs> when you're moving underneath here as well. Gotcha. 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 Got ya. Ah, come on, you can do it. Got ya. Gotcha. That one's not in. Is now <sighs> right. Now is the time where I'm going to bring a clamp into the situation. I'm going to use my light clamps. I'm going to take the gloves off because I don't want glue all over my clamps. Ten minutes to go. I think we're going to do it. I think we'll do it. Now these are a quick action clamp. These are brilliant. These clamps. Absolutely love them. All I want to do is lock it together so when I stand it up it doesn't all go falling. Then I'm going to start looking at the other parts that need fine tuning as far as the, um, the clamping process is concerned. Here we go. Stand her up and it won't fall apart. Good. Move those guys. Excellent. Okay, that one there. Let's start with the top. About there. Okay. That's good. Now, I did make comment that this blue tape was here for a purpose. I needed to make sure that I didn't over clamp, so that's fine. That ends good. Ah. Spin it around a bit. And wait for it to go pop as it goes in. There she goes. They're all going in well. Squeeze this one up a bit more. I'm going to get a stronger clamp there. There's a bit of glue needs squeezing out. See, these, the parallel clamps have about seven times, seven times the amount of pressure that they can put on than these can. So I'm going to take that one off, put a parallel clamp down here. And pull together. Done. Done. And then down the other end. Yeah, so it's just, you know, Cole talks about his boxes are a piston fit. It's the same kind of thing happens here. The air might get trapped. Remember, there's no glue slots in these that I've made. These ones up here. So we have to be careful. Actually, I'm going to drop that down a little bit further so it'll pull the bottom as well. Pull the spreader in and the bottom rail there. You know what? That might be a perfect spot for those things. Give me a second. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I've got a little bit of time. A little bit of time to go. If I have them here, I'll use them. Now, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? There's one. I think I might have two. Give me a second. I have one here. These things allow the clamps to get a grip on an angle. Now the front doesn't need it. I'll take the, the glue cover off and then slide this on. 
See that? Now I can put that down there. Pull this back. And now tighten it up. Oop, go, go to the end, like so. And in a bit, and then tighten it up. Now it's tightening, it's tightening the bottom one and the top one at the same time. See that? So it's pulling on that 90 degree face, and on this angle here, that is working just beautifully. Good. Check this one. They're all good. To the right depth. Not too tight. Back it off a little. Doesn't need to stay super tight. Let's see if I've got another one of those. Give me a second. I might have one. There's nothing in there. Where would I put them? Move that over there for you guys to have a look there. Um, you know, you're looking, 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 trying to find things all the time. If I can't find them, it doesn't matter. But it would be handy. No. It would have been very handy. I'm going to get another two of these. I'm going to pull the center up. Uh, from that side, I think. And then we'll do a couple of measurements to make sure everything's good. Back over there so you can see what's going on. that up tight. The reason I want to pull it up tight is because where the end grain is, I want it to start bonding as well, not just relying on the domino. Otherwise, little hidey holes for spiders and things. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, there it goes. A little bit more squeeze out was what I was after. Indeed it was. Um, I need a bit more there. Got more clamps, they say. You can never have too many clamps. Here, well, I was thinking it was just going to be four, but no. Because I couldn't find the others, the other angle devices, I'm going to go down here with this. Ah, that's better. The bottom wasn't working. Raise this up to there. Oh, you hear it pulling in? Much better. Okay, that's all good there. And we'll go down the other end. And we're coming up to 12 o'clock. And I've done it yet again. <laughs> I'll put this one here. So it's pulling hard on that part of the joint. And drop this one down here. Because I was getting deflection in the timber because I wasn't right over the... See that? I don't know if you can, but there was a bit of deflection at the bottom there. And now it's pulling it up and the squeeze out has worked. Good. All of them are good. All of those, all of those. That's all good. Solid as. Uh, I get my square and check it. <laughs> all right. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Uh, down here. That looks pretty good to me. And this corner. Yes. See that? 
beautiful. It's lovely. Good. I'm happy. I am happy with that. There we go. Done. Uh, so were you guys betting on who was, uh, how many minutes was going to take me to assemble it? I'm going to leave that in the clamps. I'm at work tomorrow, so, you know, I'll, I'll probably come down first thing in the morning because I'm like a little kid at Christmas. Come down, <laughs> check what's out under the tree, take the clamps off, see how it goes. But I might leave it and, uh, and be done with it until for another day or two, come and have a look at it on Tuesday. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching it. And, whew, done. Done. Time for a beer, you reckon, Dave? Well, maybe. Maybe not. Beer's no good for you. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Chuffed. Very happy. And the glue didn't go off on me. There's plenty of working time. So we were running for, what, 40 minutes in the assembly. And it, uh, the glue was fine. The temperature in here at the moment is 21 degrees because I've got the the heater on so it's not as though it was cold slowing the setting time down but they do recommend to use the slow um well actually maybe they recommend that no nope, not even going to make a comment because i'll get it wrong anyway it's done it's done thanks for watching remember to check the description box down the bottom click on the affiliate links if you if you're after anything from there you know you uh the show will get a little bit of a kickback from it where it was going to cost you the same price anyway, so why not? Um, another one, thanks mate, have a present for you next time to catch up. Oh, wow, thanks Peter. Uh, now, Patreons, patrons, uh, all my patrons, you got a, a early viewing of what the bench looked like when I did the dry fit. So if you want to be like those lucky people, you can click on the Patreon link in the description box down the bottom and become one of my patrons. And all the patrons are welcome to come along to the live chat that we do right after the show. So in about a minute or two after the show finishes, we'll load up the chat and away you go. So if you do want to join or want to see it, become a patron, then slide down the patron, Patreon posts. I think it's about four or five down is where there's a link for a Zoom meeting. So if you do that, you can hang out with the other guys that uh, we talk rubbish after it. Oh, Matt, th thank you very much. A kippy. I'm guessing that's uh, similar to a coffee. <laughs> I will indeed. Thank you so much for that, Matt. If you feel like doing what Matt just did, go for it. Okay, let me see what we've got here. Intro and text. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you next week for putting all of the slats on. And we're going to use um, stainless steel screws and plugs. So if you haven't been able to do that before, watch. See you later. Bye.